Good evening. This is the Town of Barnstable Waterways Committee workshop on uh, November the 15th, 2003. Uh, present we have for the Town of Barnstable, Harbor Master Brian Taylor, Assistant Alicia Lozon, Deputy Harbor Master Jay Horn, and members <laughs> Peter Cross, Gary Shramick, uh, myself, Paul Everson, and do we have any, uh, we have Jay, um, do we have uh, Greg Egan? I think Greg told me he was possibly not going to make it. And how about Todd? If not, we still, we still have a quorum. So... Let's proceed. Uh, before we get going, please note that tonight's meeting is being recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 in accordance with Mass General Law 30A, Section 20. I must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting and to please make their presence known, if so. All right. Uh, hearing none, I'll turn the meeting over to Deputy Harbor Master Horn. Thanks, sir. Uh, as you know, we've made some changes to the regulations, um, very minor changes in my opinion, and I have them uh, listed, you know, here for you tonight. What I'm looking for the committee is a vote after uh, each presentation. I'm looking for approval on these so that we can push them forward to the legal department and get them uh, in place by the first of the year. That's our goal anyway. Uh, I guess without further ado, we'll just get right into it if everyone's ready. Oh, go ahead. All right. First one on the agenda is 406-4. That's mooring permits. Um, <clears throat> the town of Barnstable mooring permit is required for all moorings placed in the waters of the town of Barnstable. Falsifying information on a mooring permit application or failure to submit a fully completed mooring permit shall be caused for non consideration of such application. We want to add a caveat at the end that says the harbor master or his designee have final discretion on permitting all of the moorings in the town of Barnstable. Uh, we, we kind of do this already, but there's some non-designated mooring permits that just don't make sense. They might be a hazard to navigation. They just might not work for that specific area. So we're just looking to add this caveat um, so that we have it in writing that we do revite, you know, uh, that we do have the right to revoke a mooring permit application. That's all. Any discussion from the committee on that one? Yeah, first off, what uh, happens with the appeal process that's currently in place now? Appeal process would still be the same. Yeah, it would stay the same. Okay, and is there language in there that says that someplace? Uh, not in this particular paragraph, but I do make everyone aware of the fact that when I deny it, they have the right to appeal that to waterways. And I believe it is written in the regulations, right, Brian? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can we get a vote on it? I move uh, It's okay with me. Okay, Gary. Peter? Uh, yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. Uh, I'll go along with that. That's fine. All right. <clears throat> Same section 406-4, paragraph A. I can get past the first part of this. Um, Basically, for all new mooring applications and change of vessels, vessel must be owned by the mooring permit holder. Further, all vessels must be registered or documented within the same name of the mooring permit holder as listed on the mooring permit. The spouse of a legally married couple may appear on registration, documentation, title, and or bill of sale. However, the mooring permit is issued solely to the individual name on the mooring permit itself. What I'm looking to do here is not to confuse anybody, but I want to allow the spouse to be permitted solely on the registration. And I'm having troubles moving people off the wait list. Basically, 
Mr. Smith gets offered a mooring, but the boat is in Mrs. Smith's name. And right now, currently, if you're going to register your boat in the state of Massachusetts, you can only have one name on that registration. With the documentation from the Coast Guard, two names can be placed on there, and we accept that. But with the actual registration in the state of Massachusetts, they do not allow two names to appear on the registration. So I run into trouble with the boats in his name, the mooring permits in her name, et cetera. To me, it doesn't make a difference if they're legally married, uh, who has the boat registered in whose name. It, do it doesn't matter to me personally. So I want to specifically write in there that the spouse is permitted solely on the registration or documentation. And I'll take any comment on that one. Okay. Sure. What does that line mean? Spouse permitted solely on registration documentation. It would just allow us, because currently right now, uh, Mr. Cross, we need the individual to be the actual vessel the right. vessel needs to be registered in their name. So we would basically allow a spouse to have the vessel permitted in their name uh, only, not meaning that. So individual... This is a, this this is an either or situation. Correct. When it comes okay. to the registration or the documentation. Right. We don't, allow, we don't allow two names on the mooring permit. As far as the town is concerned, who's ever on the mooring permit owns the mooring. It's registered to them and them exclusively. <clears throat> what we're getting at is here, do, does it really matter if the boat's registered in the wife's name, but the mooring permit is in the husband's name? Got it. Well, why don't we just say that it ha the, the owner of the, the mooring has to be the one the word's registered? That's the way it currently is right now. <clears throat> but, but, we do, so, but we do well, make an are... exception, and so, we allow the spouse to be on the documentation. But it has that, has that, well, <clears throat> I don't know, it seems confusing. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been. I mean, I always thought the mooring permit had to be the person who was registered, regardless if they're a spouse or not. That's the way it currently is, but we already have an exception to the rule where we do allow them both to appear on the documentation of the vessel. Uh, could we have a grandfather clause as a such and such a date? Or would that stop the, would that hurt your, uh, the wait list? We don't have a grandfather clause. No, this is going to make it easier for me to, to, to move people off the wait list. And these, these, the circumstance doesn't come up frequently, Jay, correct? I mean, it's, it's no, maybe no. 10%, 5%. Where we run in, I'm sorry to cut you off. Where we run into trouble is a lot of people have um, not estates, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Brian? Um, LLCs, trust. corporations, corporations, yeah. and trusts. I've run into a lot with trust, where the the boat is registered to a trust of a family member. The trust is in the wife's name, but the mooring permit is in the husband's name, and they can't sell the boat out of the trust. Yeah, I remember that from a couple of years ago. Yeah, I had one of those. I didn't think we were allowed to have vessels or let's say in moorings or slips to a trust or an LLC, unless it's a commercial vessel. So for slips, we are allowed for commercial vessels, but you need to come forward with the waterways committee with a business plan and move forward. Right. However, that corporation right. LLC trust needs to solely be in the individual that the slip is in. The with name. a mooring, with a mooring, we will allow an individual to permit a vessel to that mooring. The mooring will be to a per individual, not a trust or an LLC or a corporation. We would allow an individual if that vessel isn't a trust, a corporation, an LLC, if the trust LLC, blah, 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 is in the mooring permit holder's name. Okay. All right. Totally. Yeah. We ask for additional documentation in those cases. I'm okay can, with this. That's in, all right. Yeah, that's in, fine. And more importantly, with situations like this, we continually have to ask for this information because I'm sure you're all aware you can go in and change a trust. You can go in and change an LLC or a corporation. Right. So the, during the annual renewal process or at any point in time, as the regulations read, we may require.
request that documentation to ensure that it hasn't changed hands. Regardless of that, though, the individual is the one being permitted the mooring, and that would remain the same. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for clarifying that. And I'm okay with that as well. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. Just okay. one more just one more thing. And I think it's important to note that this is not something we're gonna try to we're we're not like selling <laughs> this out. We're we're not saying, okay, you know, it doesn't matter. We're putting this caveat in here for the circumstances that Jay's run into right. where you know, a spouse owns the vessel or in those certain circumstances where a corporation or LLC in the in the spouse may be, um, you know, the individual that's registered to that. But this isn't something that we're trying to sell. I mean, realistically, it makes more sense if an individual comes in and permits, uh, we permit the mooring to them and the vessel's registered underneath them. That 100% makes sense. There, there, Like Jay said, there's already a caveat in here where we allow a spouse to be on the documentation. So it's yeah. it's pretty much already in existence. It just kind of it places this in here uh to allow us a little bit more leniency when we run into situations like this. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, same 406-4, uh section 8. Permitted individual moorings are transferable to an immediate family. The immediate family shall include brother, sister, son, daughter, father, mother, or spouse. Transfer fee documentation to support the relationship and a notarized letter stating the intent to transfer the mooring are required. No more than one transfer may occur per year, 365 days. Very small change, guys. I just want it to be per calendar year. And again, this is all about facilitating people off the wait list. Um, it takes me all year to offer these moorings. I'm still doing it right now. I still have applications coming in in November. And a lot of times uh, the mooring will get transferred to the spouse or to the husband afterwards. And I just want them to be able to do that on the next mooring renewal season and not have to wait the full 365 days. So we want to limit the amount of transfers. It's still one per calendar year instead of the 365 days. I hope that's not confusing, but it's just a very small change. And it also allows us more an easier management. I mean, you start the clock from when the person was in, issued the the mooring. You got to go 365 days from that day. It, it just allows for easy easier management. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, one one per calendar year. Okay. You need to change the wording at the bottom in the next uh, the last par last uh, line. It says occur per calendar year, and then you have per calendar year. So you need to strike occur per calendar year, 365 days. Well, this is how it's originally written. The, the original regulation is no more than one transfer may occur per year, 365 days. That's how it's written right now. Okay. Our correction would be per calendar year. Yeah, but he's he's correct. We'd have to strike yeah. out. The yeah, per we'll year. That out Otherwise, it's going to say may goal. occur per per year per calendar year. Yep, understood. Which is, re which is redundant. Duly yeah. noted. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Old English teachers never die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, we're up to four oh six six. We talked about this the last meeting. Mooring tags. We're no longer currently using mooring tags. So we want to scrap that from the regulations altogether. Right now, it just says the use of a mooring tag is at the discretion of the harbor master. Uh, we haven't used those in several years. So we'd like to keep 406-6 and um, put in something that was previously approved by the Waterways Committee. And that's a non-motorized vessel under 12 feet may only be registered to a mooring for the first year of issuance, permitting a non-motorized vessel for more than one year is at the discretion of the harbor master. I'm trying to crack down on the placeholders. That's what this, this regulation is all about. Um, when I started three years ago, we had a ton of people that are, are renewing their, their moorings with kayaks, with dinghies, with unpowered vessels that are under 12 feet. And the town has a lot of town ways to water where we allow small vessel storage already. So to me, this is just people, this is the empty mooring problem in, in a nutshell. 
um, if we continue to allow them to register dinghies and kayaks to their moorings, well, we're never going to get these people to give them up. So I'm trying to crack down a little bit here on the regulations, and I would like to substitute the 406-6 to put this caveat in there. Okay. I mean, and in circumstances where an individual does have, let's say, a smaller sailboat, right, to its skiff, something that's 12 feet, we could still permit them for over one year. Like Jay said, we're really just trying to capitalize on the individuals that are holding a spot or permitting a kayak or a small robo. We want the moorings to be used. We want people out there. Um, and so we're really trying to capitalize on that. Yeah. The only thing I would add here to Jay is at the discretion of the harbor master or his designee. Because you may permit the mooring as well. So that's the only yep. thing about that. Questions, concerns with this? It's okay with me. Okay with me too. Um, yeah, I'm trying to formulate a uh, an opinion here, but uh, yeah, right now I'm okay with this. Yeah, again, <clears throat> We have plenty of opportunities for individuals to store their small vessels. So I do have guys that, that do put kayaks. There's a guy in, in Shoestring Bay who has a, has a mooring permit. He keeps his 16 foot kayak on it. I'm going to approve that. Um, he's actually using it as it's supposed to be intended. But what I'm really getting after here is these people who keep renewing their mooring permits that don't own a vessel anymore. They're, they're not letting go of their mooring. Um, and they're using this loophole where they can just put anything on there uh, as a placeholder. And that, that's what I'm really after here. Okay. That's almost like a precursor to the, the point where we get, if you have a mooring and you you have to occupy it. Right now, we, we don't have that, but this is kind of something going towards that direction, I guess. That's correct. I'm, I'm trying to tighten things up a little bit. Okay, yeah, I'm good with this. But we also recognize that when individuals are offered a mooring, they may not own a boat and or they may not have financially be responsible or excuse me, shouldn't say that. They they may not financially have the money to purchase a boat right away. So we allow them time and in that, you know, hopefully they have a kayak or a, a small vessel or a dinghy or something like that. So they can permit that for a year. It just allows individuals a little bit more time. But what we don't want is the turnover from year to year. Yeah, I'm going to buy a boat. Yeah, I'm going to buy a boat and play something on that. We just don't want that continued turnover when the holding on the spot. Okay. Yeah, I, I've run into that a lot, Brian. I'm glad you brought that up. It's always a catch-22. Every time I offer a mooring, they're like, oh, we've been waiting to get a mooring or waiting to get a boat, but we you know, we don't have a place to put it. So now that we have the mooring, we're going to purchase a boat. And most of these individuals do do that. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you, sir. Everyone's okay with that one? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We're good. All right. Four oh six dash sixteen. Excuse me. The following wait list: Katua Town Dock, Ropes, Katua Bay Shores, North Bay, North Bay Channel, Prince Cove, West Bay, Tim's Cove, Centerville, East Bay, Fish Hills, Katua Ropes, Cordwood, West Bay Flats, shall be in effect and considered closed until the respective wait list has been diminished, and all applicants have either been awarded a mooring, or have been removed for failure to perform. We want to add until additional names are needed to be added for discretion of the harbor master. One small edit here, though, Jay. It's so those are going to continue to be closed. So and considered closed until, and you can strike out the until, but it's until additional names are needed to be added per discretion of the harbor master because they're still going to be considered closed. Right. Right. Thank you. One small edit. So basically, what we're doing now is. We have to diminish that whole wait list before we add names. But what we're running into is individuals passing and us not being able to fill those spots because so many people have passed. And so some mooring fields may only have, you know, 
15, 16, 17 names on them. We get all the way down the end and then we can't fill the spots and we have to hold a lottery and it takes time to fill, to put more names on those lists. So this would just allow us foresight to say, hey, this this mooring field's getting down. And Jay usually comes to my office. He said, you know, I got down to number 35 or 40. We only have 50 names on this list. We need to add 25 more in case I run into this again. It just allows the process to continue and more people to get onto the, the wait list areas. Okay, and do you anticipate that adding those names are just going to be opening up the list, or is it going to be by the lottery? No, it's 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 always through a lottery. Always through the lottery. And I okay. think, in fact, the only one we have left, left in this list, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, would be West Bay Flats. We've held a lottery for all of the other locations and exhausted them pretty much okay. to the end. Um, it, it really makes more sense for us to – to issue a lottery kind of on demand when we feel like we're getting to the end of the list so we can add more people and give people the opportunity. Yeah, North, North Bay is a perfect example of this. There's 24 people currently on the North Bay wait list. All 24 of those people have been offered a mooring three years in a row and all 24 people have refused. So even though we haven't diminished the list and we haven't gotten to the end of it, um, I need to add more names because no one will accept the mooring. Hmm. Do you think that that situation in North Bay is unique in that it's, as we know, a lot of it is uh, considered, you know, the uh, the hurricane mooring, but you've got the Katuit Bay shores. Do you differentiate between the two? Every single mooring field has dead weight on the wait list. Um, years ago, when these lists were open, people just added their names to every list that they could. You see the same individual on every um, closed wait list that we have. And, you know, what happens is they took a mooring at the Katua Town Dock. For whatever reason, they still keep their name on Katua Bay Shores, North Bay, you know, Dam Pond, for example. Um, why they keep renewing these, I don't know. But they, they never accept the mooring when I offer it to them. So every mooring field is different. We just want to have the ability to say, okay, you know, the list is getting low. We're not at the point where we want to kick people off of it yet. We are collecting data on that. We 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 know who's passing now. We know who's taking moorings. Um, I've been doing that for three years. Uh, we might end up doing something with this dead weight. You know, it's been a topic of discussion here. But as of right now, this just allows us to add names to the list and keep going and keep moving people off the wait list. Good idea. <laughs> and the data is great because Jay has to start at the top of the list every single year, right? And he needs <laughs> to wait. He needs to wait the five business days. But what Jay has done is he's obtained this data and said, okay, well, the first 24 people in Hyannisport have not renewed, the, have not accepted a wait list offering the last three years. So what it'll actually go ahead and do is bulk offer those first 24 people and wait the five days. And that's done with. So all those people will either get back to him or they, they won't within the five days. And if they don't within the five days, he'll continue to move on. But it allows us a more efficient process where we're not going, you know, by one, two people, three people. It allows us to collect that data and say, well, we know the first 24 people didn't didn't accept the mooring the past three years. We're going to go ahead and bulk off for those first 24 names. So it actually speeds up the process so that we can get lower on those lists and get more people on the water. Yeah. Good idea. Sure, oh, get lower faster. No, that's good. Okay, everybody good with that? Yeah. You and bet. that you're going to make that change after the harbor master or designee, right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, last one. This one is in the same section, 406-16. Um, this is just a very simple date change. Right now, wait list renewals go from January 1st to February 15th. We want to extend that for a period of two weeks and make the renewal date February 28th because that coincides with the mooring permit renewal date of February 28th. So we want these two dates to match. And, you know, 
basically we're giving people two more weeks to renew their wait list position. 13 days to be exact, but what Jay's kind of, this is a big change and it's a, it's a positive change because the reason why the dates were staggered is because we used to get a lot of individuals in the office. Really right now, about 65 to 70% of renewals are all online. We do still get some in the mail, but a lower percentage is in person. We still have people come in and have questions and have change of vessels and our office is still busy. But what we're seeing is a lot more people renew online. Yeah. So they staggered the dates historically. So the 15th and the 28th would be two separate dates of renewal. So we didn't have a line out the door. Um, but I think by bringing the date to the 28th and lining it up with moorings, it's just more logical moorings and wait lists they're all due the same date you don't have to rec you don't have to remember two separate dates it makes it it makes it the same okay i'm good with that i'm good right on all right thank you it's just important to note here that the wait list is still going to be a hard deadline of the 28th for wait lists there is no sort of appeal process if you do not renew in time, you fall off the list. Good. That's it, gentlemen. Well, there's Jay, one more thing, and and I would went through the regulations. There is some verbiage, uh, some verbiage in there, like adding commas, period, capitalizing. It's very it's nothing to do with changing regulations, but we're gonna clean up a little of that. Um and other than that, uh, these were the proposed changes. Okay. Is okay. So that's the uh, extent of the workshop then for tonight. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank unless the, unless the committee had anything else to add, uh, I mean, it is a workshop. These are just our proposed changes. You're welcome to bring up any other items that you want to address within the mooring regulations. Okay, I would just kind of go back to what I had said about the precursor of uh, people not using the, the moorings and not not putting boats, even though the, the moorings legal, it's registered, a vessel is registered to it. I think it's another step forward to uh, making sure that the, the vessel that's registered is on the mooring. You know, again, we can talk as far as, you know, different, uh, uh, amendments or allowing somebody to skip a year, you know, a, a excused absence, you know, whether it be for, you know, family things, health, that, that nature. But I think it's another step in that direction where, uh, where we kind of need to go just to get the, the, the full use of our mooring field. I would, I would love to see that. I don't know how that would be administered through the Harbor master and mooring officers off offices that would that requires a lot of a lot of checking and a, a system uh, but i I agree with you paul it it just drives me crazy to see moorings and they're they're registered and they're they're in the water they don't even have mooring lines on them you know there's there's there's, there's no there's no pretending that they're going to put a boat on it it's just sitting there right well again they need to permit a vessel to the mooring. We do not mandate that they place that vessel on the right, mooring. I, understand I, think that's, that. I think that's what you're speaking to. But, and I know Jay's going to speak to this a little bit more, and we talked about this today. Barnstable is huge. We have 27 different mooring fields, 107 yeah. miles of coastline. It would take an army to ensure that we're checking <laughs> these moorings on a regular basis. And yeah. I'm not saying we, I'm not, staying we can't get to that point mm -hmm. but we're continuing to collect the data we talked a little bit about collecting the data when we're gpsing which is potentially going to start next year um but we do have a plan in place to move in that direction at this time i don't think we're ready for that that's all i'll let jay speak yeah, a little more that, that. that would would take a great deal of forethought and a great deal of planning to uh to make that happen but i think that that's you know should be a goal in the future to for for us to work on as a group um let me just pull up a quick graph here i think i've showed you this guys before but 
This is, uh, can everyone see that graph now? Yep. Yeah. So this is the historical permit data for the last 20 years. Uh, the all-time high was in 2011 at 25,000, or excuse me, 2,550 moorings. Um, I just surpassed that a, a couple days ago. We're at 2,558. My first year as mooring officer was right here in 2021. I added 150 mooring permits to the town. So I, I'm, I'm working, guys. The first thing on my plan here is to get the numbers up, to get them to a healthy level, get more people off the wait list. Uh, and then I'm going to switch gears towards enforcement. And I've, and I've already been, been doing that as I go along. Uh, for example, Hyannisport, when I first took office and I went out and did a compliance check in Hyannisport, there was 36 illegally tied up vessels. And it took me all summer to clean up this mooring field to get these people off of other people's moorings. Um, <clears throat> I go back the next year and half of them are back. Uh, it was it was a long <laughs> battle. And uh, third year now this summer, uh, I'm very happy to say I went out there. There was a couple people um who weren't following the rules but i finally got the point across and i'm going to be out there i'm going to be checking and what i saw through this enforcement was an influx of moorings um being given up so i think that this particularly had a, had a lot to do with it the more we enforce it the more we get out there the more we check moorings um the more people stop renting them to other people and have a monetary value behind that I think the more um, apt they're going to be to give those moorings up. So we talk about this all the time, guys. I it, It's on my list of things to do. But right now, my focus is getting the numbers up, getting these people off the wait list, keep moving the wait list, uh, you know, and then I'm going to tackle the the unused mooring problem. Um, but I, I'm well aware of it. I'm not happy with it. I'm not content with it at all. Um, it's just a matter of how we're going to do it. And I do have some good ideas on that, but um, <clears throat> I'm not going to speak to them at this time. Uh, but it's it's on our agenda. That's 100%. Good. Thanks, Jay. Yeah, that's uh, we wouldn't even, I don't think, push for that legislation or the, the amendment or the change to that regulation until, you know, the, the Harbor Masters Department is ready to, you know, go out and enforce it. And if it's, if you guys are stretched right now as you are, but you know, the, your automation, your, uh, your, your analysis, your, your data collection, I think is, is been tremendous in the past uh, couple of years. And it really, it shows trends. Uh, you know, we have that dip looking there, like, you know, in the, in 2016 or so, and then, you know, back up again. And, um, but the historical data really uh, is important here for you guys as a as a way to measure uh, the usage. And once you gain that kind of maxed out, so to say, uh, mooring uh, fields, and the uh, then you can you know I think maybe start to address some of the unused moorings and inquire you know why isn't there a boat out there you know. Yeah. Oh, great. It's a, uh, it's a tough subject. You know, people waited 15, 20 years to get this morning. So it's very hard to talk about the possibility of taking that away from them. And oftentimes it's because of age, um, but they want to transfer it to a family member. You know, I do ask people, I, I know the, the, the individuals that are out there that aren't using their mornings. And I do ask them, I do have conversations about it and they're waiting to transfer it to you know, their son or their daughter, but they're in college and yada, yada, yada. People have a whole bunch of different reasons of why they're holding on to these things. Um, but it's just hard as a mooring officer to say, I'm going to take that away from you when the individual followed the rules, they got on the wait list, they waited their turn, they waited 15, 20 years to get that mooring. It's a hard thing to to talk about taking it away from that individual. It's not an easy task. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Yeah, you have to have the compassion and understanding as well, which, you know, sometimes is a hard uh, sell against the uh, the regulation. But uh, I think you guys are taking the right approach. You know, the 
the understanding and tried to accommodate as many people that want to get out there and play by the rules mm -hmm. and make the rules uh, fairly acceptable and uh, and you be able to work within the uh, the parameters of it. So good job. Anybody else to add anything further? If not, we can uh, we can close this meeting, uh, this workshop. Thanks for everybody for attending. Thank you guys. Thank you. All see right. you. Um, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you. Yeah. We'll see you after Thanksgiving, right, Jay? I think it's yeah. a Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, twenty eighth. Yes. Yep. Great. All right, everybody. Thank hey, you. Thank you. Me.